Welcome, fellow Trekkies and Trekkers. It's time for another episode of Treknicity. I'm your host, Lars Desenza, coming to you from somewhere in Southern California or perhaps beyond the cosmos. I haven't figured it out quite yet. Join well, at me... least it's not on fire there, where you're at. Close enough. Joining me <laughs> for this episode, and again, is my fellow uh, red shirt geek and hetero life mate, Patrick, uh, back for another review. Oh, yeah. It's Star Trek V. Kirk fights God. <laughs> we knew this. We knew this was going to happen. So you, so I had to watch it. Yeah, you did. I didn't have to because I remember it. So oh, that's bad. But enough. you don't want to remember it. Yeah. Let's well, put it this way. I had to break out a palate cleanser afterwards. And I chose Prelude to Axanar, and I hate Alec Peters even more after watching it again. Yep. Yeah. And, and you're and and I and you don't have any so reason good. to hate him because you didn't give him any money. Yeah. Yeah, I was smart. I didn't wait, lose money to that idiot. Okay, so let's talk about this piece of shit, yeah, rather well, than that piece of shit. Well, that produced great shit. Uh, let, let's 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 start with the technical aspects. Okay, um, the reason why uh, uh, William Shatner was given the ability to direct this movie is that there was a clause written into his contract and Leonard Nimoy's contract back while they were filming the original series. That said, it was basically like for what, like for like, and because Leonard Nimoy got to direct a film, in this case, he got to direct two of them. Um, then William Shatner got to would get to do it himself as well. The only thing is, is that this is a steaming pile of dog turds, and of mm. course, it did very badly at the uh, at the theater, and he was not given a chance to return. At least not a directorial role. I mean. Sure, Trek would go worse than this one, but damn. Yeah. Okay, so we start, rather than 10 minutes of opening credits that are boring space with, to a theme, we actually start on a, the planet Nimbus 3, which is very reminiscent of the next hour and 17 minutes. It's a shitty planet. A <laughs> shitty, lifeless planet filled with, yeah. filled with yeah. soulless beings. With even less rain than California got, I'm sure. Yeah. So, so, so basically, it starts with some guy digging a hole in dry dirt, and some asshole in slow mo is riding a horse toward him. He, of course, grabs his slug thrower and goes, "Oh no, I must shoot him!" And of course, this guy shows up and weird heartbeats during, and I must feel your pain, and starts. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Well, the thing is, and I remember and, um, um, that. Uh, don't forget the most important part is uh, is the space the, the space horse because there's no horses in space. This had to have this had to be a space horse, so they put a little tiny little nub on his head. Whatever, I didn't notice it because holy crap, it's Vulcan Jesus! <laughs> Pretty yeah, much. it's Vulcan Jesus. So we cut to the end. We finally hit the end credits. We, I mean, sorry, no, the opening credits. I was hoping it was the end credits, but no, I got not the lucky. The opening credits and Jerry Goldsmith's beautiful score is back playing, and it's wonderful, and it sounds great. This is the best part of the movie. The, the, the soundtrack. Yes, the soundtrack is the best part of this movie. It is amazing throughout the entire movie. The, the and this has been improvement over the to the motionless pictures version of the soundtrack because it's just got more energy and it sounds better and it's great. And, and got, then we're and, and we then got a we really cut cool to, version, and we got a really cool version of the of the Klingon attack song that was really awesome. Oh, oh yeah, we'll get to that. But first, we cut to Yosemite National Park on Earth and the side of El Capitan. There's somebody climbing it. Who could it be? It's Kirk. Why not? Of course, it has to be Kirk because we got to focus on what Kirk's doing because Shatner directed this piece of shit. Remember? Yeah. Of course. Meanwhile, it's McCoy standing down with bin- with weird square binoculars, getting all ape shit. It's like, oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack. I'm gonna pass out. Oh, I might talk to myself. I am a, I am a scared old doctor. Ah! Spock flies up and starts talking to Kirk, and Kirk gets frustrated and falls. And I'm cheering. Come on, fall, die, die, die. But no, he lives because Spock saves him, and we have stupid dialogue. But whatever, man, I don't again, care. Again, with Spock saving him. I mean, he did it in Star Trek Two, <laughs> and now Star Trek uh, in Star Trek Five. Yeah, you think you we thought, should stop that? You Luckily, th- Spock's you were... not around in Star Trek Generations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that one later. Yeah, we'll rip on that one later. 
It's it's better than this movie, though. True. So we cut to Paradise City, and it's worse than the Guns N' Roses version, which yeah. is really kick ass. Awesome. Yeah. Now, if they had put that song in the in the movie, we we might have had something salvageable. That that would have improved it. Unfortunately, um, we find it's a shittier version. We go to our standard alien bar, which even has like a three boob kitty cat girl woman dancing. Which yeah, is, no, what yeah. what the hell was that? Three one? boobs. And on top of it, somebody hits her tail, and you hear a cat screech. And I was like, oh no. Yeah. Don't worry, she jumps on Kirk later. The pussy jokes will fly. Um, let's see here. So we get we find our three representatives of the three of the three major empires: the fairly hot Romulan chick, a uh, fat Klingon, and an oldish-looking human. I mean, he's not that old. Come to think of it, he looks about our age now. Yeah. But he always seemed old because I'm old and I'm uh, I'm on this planet and I'm sort of si- semi-British-ish. I think I don't know. Remember that. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Remember. Okay. So this, you know, that's Sinjin Talbot. Um, the the Klingon is General Cord, and of course the Romulan is Caitlin Dar. Um, yeah. But yeah, the thing is, <laughs> remember <laughs> the the important thing is that okay, the character the the actor playing um, Sinjin Talbot. Um, redeems himself in the next movie by playing Chancellor Gorkin. Point taken. However, this is Star Trek V. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing saves it except the end credits. So the, so, so Vulcan Jesus' forces start the attack. They come over and they take all the representatives prisoner. Of course they get a distress signal off or something. Um, which, of course, means we cut to Space Dock, and we see the Enterprise, and we get to hear Scotty bitch about how shitty the new Enterprise is, because it's a piece of shit, and it doesn't work, and half the things are broken. And, oh, and I'm whining, because I'm, I'm not going to get as much role, because Shatner's directing this. Yeah, pretty much. Also, this is Star Trek V. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, they get to the bridge, and we get a little Uhura action, Uhura flirting with Scotty action, which... I never remember that from any other movie, ever. No, no it was never and seen again. we get a red alert from Starfleet. Apparently, there's still no other ships in the quadrant! Holy ever. shit! Can't they call any other ship to go solve this problem? Why is it always the Enterprise? What is so they-, they ha- So they have to call everybody back. Um, they get, um, let's see here. Um, they get Sulu and Chekhov are lost somewhere in the woods, so they, of course, rescue them. Um mm-hmm. Rescue them. Rescue them. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Which means we then cut back to Kirk, Spock, and McCoy at the campfire. Yep, where they're singing, or actually, no, they're uh, drinking uh, drinking whiskey and eating beans. And, and then they start to... trying to sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Yeah. And... Seriously, we couldn't find any other song. Was that the only public domain <sighs> song you could find? Well, Holy crap. There's I mean, that, and then there's also the fact that Spock what was, the actual ass. was going to roast a marshmallow. I'm still trying to figure out what a marshmallow is. I saw a marshmallow. Who cares? <clears throat> Who really, really cares at this point? It's Star Trek V. <laughs> uh, so, of course, Uhura shows up and says, hey, let's go. We gotta go. We gotta get going because, yeah. Yeah. Oh, one other thing in this scene that I noticed. They seem to be able to curse. They curse as flawlessly as any 20th century human, unlike in the last movie where they couldn't curse. All they could do was save the f***ing whales! So, (laughs) you mean like when he says, turn that damn light off? (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they're just, that's perfectly fine. Even, even later in the movie, Spock nails it perfectly. Ugh! Just, okay, so, yeah, that just ruined it for me. Uh, Complete. Okay, so, we cut to the Klingons. And we got Klingon-y Klingon with, I am Klingon, look at me, how Klingon-y I am. We must have, we've got, we've got orders, we've got to go to Nimbus 3, and the Federation's going there, so we will go there and shoot somebody, because we are Klingons. Yep. Actually, the pro- for some reason, my copy, the I'm not getting any subtitles, so I kind of had to guess what they were saying, and I can't understand Klingon that well, so. 
but it was pretty much we are Klingons. Go, we go shoot stuff because yeah. they were. I like started by shooting a probe or something, which screamed, "What the shit?" Yeah. Well, um, yeah. So they uh, that was Captain Claw, and yeah. and um, yeah, he basically finds out that the uh, Federation is sending a starship, um, and they find out that it's Kirk and. They figure, let's go, let's go face Kirk in battle because, you know, the old... They haven't found out it's Kirk yet, but they're going to go there and start shit anyway because they're Klingons and we got to start shit. Yeah, that's so, what they do. So everybody's gotten to the ship and it's a disaster, like this movie. <laughs> um, so they managed to get everything sorted. Um, interesting side note, I think this is where... Um, what's his, ah, Hold on. Um, what is his name? I hold on. I will tell you the whole cast and crew. There is a cameo here from one Harv Bennett himself. Ah, yes. Yeah, uh, I think he, I believe he's the guy. He plays the admiral, Starfleet chief of staff. Harv Bennett shows up on the screen and gets to say stuff. And he's been there since the motionless picture. Pretty much. For some reason, he's he agreed to actually. He decided to cameo in this piece of shit. Ah. Uh, well, you know, it is what it is. Everybody's looking to, for a paycheck, so. <laughs> so, of course, Kirk gets the orders. They got to go to Nimbus 3 and solve the problem because they're apparently the only starship in Starfleet, even though they're half broke. Pretty much. Uh, maybe maybe they're all in the Laurentian system. Who knows? Sorry, that's just a, no. that's a poke in the, in the side for, uh, for Abrams' Trek. Yep. Okay, so they go take. So they go on the way to Nimbus Three. They get some files to find out. Hold on. Actually, before that, the Klingons. That at this point, they find a holy crap. The Enterprise is going there, and it's Kirk. Oh yeah, we get to kill him because we're Klingon and we hate Kirk. We're gonna kill him. Yay, we're Klingons. Yeah. This is Star Trek Five. So they get files, and when and they see footage. Spock seems to be unsettled by the uh, guy who's on the screen because apparently this Vulcan Jesus got all was all emotional and got banished or something. That's all Spock shares. Mm -hmm, You know, rather than sharing the important shit, the spoiler alert. Hello, brother. No, Spock isn't going to tell us the obvious because we got to surprise people. Oh, spoiler alert, by the way. And actually, if you haven't seen this movie by now, lucky you. <laughs> Skip it. Skip it. Four to six. You don't have to worry about five. It's stupid. And nothing that happens in this movie matters. Literally. Do you, nothing do you, in this do you movie remember, matters. Do you, do you remember when they were when they went to Red Alert? Red, red, red Alert. Red, red, red Alert. alert. I, I'm going to Red Alert. We can't even get a sound effect to sound right because... This is Star Trek V. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, okay. So they get to Nimbus 3, and the transporters are still not working, so they have to fly a shuttlecraft down. They land a good walk away, so they need to get themselves a... They need to get themselves some of those space horses. So what space do they horses. do? Naked or her off fan, fan dance. dance. That was actually a plus for the movie. I'm just going to go Naked or her off fan dance. Yeah, as we get older, she's looking better and better, to be honest. Yo-ya. I mean, yeah, I'd tap that. Yeah, I might tap that now, even though her is like, what, 80 or something? Michelle Nichols is, yeah. Are you saying you'd open know. her for hailing frequencies? Um, yeah, because, let's see, hey, hold on. I will tell you how old Michelle Nichols is now. 1932. 1932, so she's in her 80s. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I You're in late she, 50s here, I yeah, guess. Yeah, she's, and she's not in the best of health, and I'm a little worried she's not going to make it through 2018. Uh, as we're, as we're uh, filming this episode, um, we are currently mourning the, the passing of one Stan Lee. Yeah. Um, Nichelle Nichols will probably not outlive Stan Lee, because not yeah. live longer than Stan Lee, because I don't think anybody can live longer than Stan Lee. Right. I, agree. I know of no one. Even the guy who voiced Hal in 2001 who died on Sunday as well. He didn't live as long. He wasn't as old as Stanley. Damn. So, 
yeah, we're going to probably start losing more Trek actors in the next few years because they're all getting old. Shatner will hang on forever because Shatner. Yeah. So, so after Sexy Uhura fan dance, um, they ride in and start shooting up the place, and it's pretty awesome. Chekhov, of course, is sitting on the ship saying, I'm the captain because I'm the captain, and whatever. I don't care. It doesn't really matter. Nothing he does is important because this is Star Trek V. Remember, so he, they, remember he shows up on the bridge in. with his backpack, his jeans, and his jacket, like looking all bohemian. Yep. So they go. They show up. They shoot their way in. Kirk, of course, gets jumped by the um, cat girl, and it's about the only time he throws pussy away. Um, okay, now that we've done that joke, let's go. Away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is Kirk. I mean, come on. He's probably got at least two venereal diseases named after him by now. Probably. So they get there, and of course the... Of course, they find the three ambassadors, and the ambassadors, of course, say, oh, no, we're going to point guns at you. It turns out they've been mind-boned by Vulcan Jesus. I like how you don't even say his name. Yeah, well, we haven't, we haven't heard his name yet. Right. We are, we are about to get there. So, of course, we walk out, and we find out that Vulcan Jesus is known as Cybok. He is, and he is Vulcan Jesus. Yeah. And he wants the starship. So what Why does, does Vulcan Jesus need with the starship? Mm, what indeed? <laughs> we haven't figured that shit out. So the Klingons are closing in. They cloak. Chekhov orders the shields up. But we've got the shuttle Galileo flying in very slowly. Very, very slowly. Uh, Star da, Trek da, style. Da, 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 yeah. Of course... They realize they have to do something because they got to land. So they, Kirk says, "We're gonna have to. We're coming in. Plan B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because barricade. Because we didn't have this emergency landing procedure. We don't have a cool emergency landing procedure. We got to make it up and let Kirk be witty because Shatner directed this piece of shit. Did I mention this is Star Trek Five? No, <laughs> no, you didn't. Of course, he also says that." He also says that Sulu's pretty good. I'm just wondering if George Takei at that moment just wanted to reach around and just punch Shatner right in the mouth for that shit. I mean, you know he wanted to. You know that George Takei wanted to punch Shatner right in the mouth at least once in every one of these movies. Yeah. At least once. I agree. Yeah. So they hit the gas and fly in and crash the shuttlecraft. Kirk and Cybok fight over the gun, which slides in front of Spock. Spock stands there like an idiot. Cybok takes them, sends them, sends Kirk, Spock, and McCoy to the brig, gets Uhura and Sulu, and does the mind meld thing on them. And the mind bone. I'm gonna go with mind, mind bone. bones. I'm gonna use mind bone because I'm pretty certain you don't want me to use the phrase that I'm. It's actually jumping into my head. Yeah. <laughs> my catacon mug. It's awesome. Okay, so let's go on. We, um, of course, we get to the bridge, and <clears throat> actually, no, we find out that Spock didn't kill Vulcan Jesus because Vulcan Jesus is half brother. Yay! Good job, Spock. Did Shatner give you those lines and say, hey, you can save this until the dramatically probing moment because I'm a dick? Of course. I'm surprised I'm surprised Shatner didn't actually have a bag of apples, you know, so every time he could pull one out so he could look like even more of an asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, they get to the bridge, Sulu starts plotting a new course while Vulcan Jesus has his way with Chekhov's brain. And then we get the we get the big reveal. Vulcan Jesus says, We're going to Shakari because there we're gonna find God and I'm going to get the mind meld with him because yes. That sounds good. Let's go find God. Do, 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 do. Here's the story of Starship Enterprise. Do, 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 do. God. Do, do, do. Is this movie over yet? No, it's not because we gotta. Get, we gotta because we gotta go to God. Gotta gotta go to God World. Yep. After we God. get, yeah, we're going to God World. Yeah, let's just call Shakari as God World. 
there's like a bunch of the stupid names. Yeah, it's Wolf like of War whatever crazy and, uh, thing. Uh, yep. Yeah, I don't care. You can quote them, but I'm not going to waste my time because this is Star Trek Five. <laughs> so, so um, after failing to break out himself because Spock tested the thing, um, Scotty shows up with some Morse code, blows a hole, helps them get out, sends them directly to where they need to go, and then docks it, runs into a bulkhead and knocks himself out because Shatner directed this shit. I know, you know they got a, you know Shatner was like sitting there when he's right, writing this the, when they're doing. Yeah, the let's place. have <laughs> Scotty smack his head. Let's, let's get knocked make him look like an, That's an, funny. An yeah. 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 That's so bad. They did Eat so my they, ass, Shatner. They did so <laughs> wrong by James doing. Uh huh. So they go to a turbo shaft. Spock while Kirk and McCoy start climbing. Spock takes off out the door and then comes somehow he gets above them and flies down on the rocket boots. They grab hold, fly up, go to the observation lounge, send out a distress call, which of course gets intercepted by the Klingons. Of course. Who somehow managed to follow them through the Great Barrier, which destroys most ships. Yep. Um, yeah, but who cares because this is Star Trek V. So then Cybok shows up and lays the mind meld on to McCoy, who snuffs his own dad, and Spock, who's sad because his daddy said, oh, you're human. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, Kirk, of course, is strong enough to resist this because he needs his pain, and he's going to share it with all of us because this is Star Trek V! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let yeah. me recover myself here. So he le- so he so Vulcan Jesus leaves him in the observation lounge, goes to the bridge, and they fly through trippy smoke because <laughs> Star Trek. So we got to do trippy smoke, and they arrive at God World. Da 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 God World. Of course, Kirk and the gang show up at this point because eh, what the hell. Sabak says, you want your ship back? Yeah, you can have it back. You want to come, you got to come da- go down there. It says, ah, yeah, I got to go down there because I'm Kirk. So they go down to God World. They walk up. They land on the planet because the transporters are still aren't working. Scotty, of course, at some point gets up and starts working on the transporters. And nobody gives a shit. It's like, oh, I'm going... I'm going to go and work on the transporters because that's what I've got to do because I am Scotty. I work on transporters. That's the only thing I do in this movie. And then run my head into things and blow holes in the ship. Pretty much. And and bitch like a little girl. <laughs> so Kirk, Spock, McCoy, and Vulcan Jesus go down to see God. They get down there. They stand around for a minute. Then rocks pop up and whoa, we get Skybeam. Yep, Skybeam shows up in this movie. And out of Skybeam pops God, or whatever. Whatever or is man. posing as God. One voice, many faces. And then, look, I am big God face. Blah, blah, blah. Ah. I, I, I think it would have been better. I know everything. Also, you've got a starship. Can you bring it down here and I'll get on it? And, of course. The line. Say the line. What does God need with a starship? <laughs> Was that Shatner enough? He, yeah, it's <laughs> too Shatner. <laughs> Which he's got Shatner-y. a point. Um, of course, Vulcan Jesus doesn't... Of course, Pseudo-God doesn't take this well, blasts him, then blasts Spock, and then looks angrily at McCoy, and Cy- and Vulcan Jesus, a.k.a. Cybok, says, Wait a minute. You're not... You're not real God. You're not God at all. Oh, oh yeah, I'll look at you. No, I'll be Vulcan Jesus... I'm God, look at me. Now I'll be Vulcan Jesus. Ah! And then Cybox says, okay, let me feel your pain. Ah! Jumps in and they start hugging or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Mm-hmm. Hugging with lightning. And then Kirk, of course, says, ah, that's your brother, Spock. Um, hey, uh, Enterprise, shoot a torpedo at these assholes. And they go diving and <laughs> Cybok and <laughs> Cybok gets blown to bits and yep. Pseudo God gets all pissed. Rawr. Because... Rar, I'm, what the, I'm, I'm what the, God, Rar. What does, Vulcan Jesus, what does Vulcan Jesus need with a torpedo? Oh, <laughs> to shoot, to shoot, um, to, to, to shoot, shoot pseudo God. God in the face. Pseudo God. So they run back to the shuttlecraft, and of course, it's not working because pseudo God's not going to let that happen. 
So, of course, at this point, the transporter's working, Captain. Well, but I can only beam two of you up. So, because this is Chatner, we got to have him on. So, McCoy and Spock are beamed up, and the Klingons show up and shoot it. So, oh no, the transporters don't work. And the Vulcan, and of course, the Klingons just want to one Kirk because that's the only thing that matters. We're Klingons. We're going to take out Kirk. Ah! That's Star Trek Five. Pretty much, yeah. So Spock proves that he can curse and convinces Fat Klingon Ambassador to go over and fix the problem. Which, of course, we cut back to Kirk while he's running for a pissed off God, and get keeps get pissed off God has stormtrooper aim, and keeps missing every second. Obviously, Kirk was not wearing a proper red shirt at this point. Otherwise, he would have been dead twice. Probably, yeah. Maybe three times. But then the Klingon ship pops up, pointing at, looking at Kirk. Like, oh, no. You want to shoot me, Klingon? Pow! They shoot the, they shoot pseudo God in the face and he blows up. And then instead, then they beam him up and then they walk him to the bridge. And, oh, fat Klingon's there and tells Klingon Klingon to say, to apologize and Klingon Klingon apologizes and then they all fly off and they fly for away from God Planet and they have a little gathering and they're all chummy because this is Star Trek 5 and it doesn't mean anything we're going to forget this entire scene yeah. in Star Trek 6 yeah. because <laughs> they're blood mortal enemies <laughs> but they're chummy this one because this is Star Trek 5 and Shatner doesn't know what the hell he's doing and who gives a shit pretty much yeah what else? Does anything good happen in here? Uh, oh yeah, we have a long, we have a long. Kirk talking about. Oh, is I don't know. I, it's stupid. It's Star Trek Five. Who cares? We forget all this by Star Trek Six, and that's good because this movie sucks ass. And of course, we end with them back in the campfire. Spock playing his Vulcan lute, and they he starts playing row 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 your boat. That's how we end the movie. And that's all the time we have for this episode. Because <laughs> that's all I have for time. That's all the four dude, dude I have for this movie. Two out of five. Because there's some there's some good ideas, some concepts. The music's good. Some scenes are fun. The dialogue is witty at times, but it feels like Shatner trying to hog the spotlight. Like he because does. Shatner. Yeah, pretty much. It's not the worst Star Trek movie I've watched. It's the worst of the original series movies, and that includes the motionless picture, which I had a problem staying awake uh, during. Man. This one, I... This one was an insult. <laughs> yeah. I, sp- I spend my time working on a... On, I spend my time... I had a Star Wars role-playing game book I was putting trying trying to recover. I spent time punching holes to put it into a binder because it was coming completely apart. No. So they, yeah, I infected I infected this with Star Wars because this movie is such crappy track that yeah I understand. Well, the thing is, you know, look, it is the worst of the Star Trek original uh, Star Trek movies, original cast or crew Star Trek movies, but it is thankfully redeemed greatly in the next movie, which we'll talk about next week. Yay! So we're gonna leave it there for now. This has been Trechnicity, and uh, I have been your host, Lars Asenzo. With me has been my uh, fellow retro geek, Patrick Murray. And as always here on Trechnicity, remember to rock out with your Spock out. See you, folks. Have a good one.